Hello, this is Pete. Welcome to the Empower Cast I Work Series, Episode 7, Advanced Gradient Fills. In this episode, we'll be covering linear gradient fills. And in Episode 8, we'll cover advanced radial gradient fills. For this episode, I'm going to use Keynote, but what we learn here also applies to pages, numbers, as well as iWeb. Before we get started, I want to do a review of what gradient fills are all about. So advanced gradient fills are fills with multiple combined gradients or gradients with a custom graduation. So this first fill we have here is a simple two-color gradient. This, in fact, is not an advanced gradient fill. It goes from blue to red with the graduation in between. This next fill is the very same two-color gradient with a custom graduation, meaning that the weight of the graduation has been pushed extremely to the right. So you see far less red and a more immediate graduation to purple and then blue, where I was able to then customize the pivot point of that graduation. Here we have a two-color gradient with one of the two colors being made transparent in the colors inspector. So this gradient gives the appearance that it fades from nothing or transparent to white. This is a three-color gradient where we start with red on the right, graduate to white in the center, and graduate from white to blue on the left. With advanced gradient fills, there's no limit to the number of colors you can choose for your gradient. So using an advanced gradient fill, I've made a five color gradient here with red graduating to orange, then yellow, then green, then blue. So let's jump into Keynote and take a look at creating advanced gradient fills. From the theme chooser, I'm gonna go ahead and just go with a white theme. And I'm going to delete the default text boxes from the white theme by just clicking them and using the delete key on my keyboard. And then before we get started, I'm going to make a black shape in case I want to demonstrate how one of my fills looks for, on a black background as opposed to just white. So I'm just going to color this with plain black with no gradient. And then I'm going to create a new shape, and that's going to be our gradient fill. And I'm gonna fill this shape with a standard gradient for starters. So I chose gradient fill and the default is black to gray. And I'm gonna change that from black to blue and then from gray to a very light blue. Then I'll change the direction of the gradient from vertical to horizontal by using the quick preset arrows here in the gradient fill inspector. So a click of the horizontal preset gets me a gradient that goes from left to right, darker blue to a lighter blue. And I'm going to remove the stroke by changing stroke to none. So now I've got a gradient fill from blue to darker blue with no stroke. And I'm going to duplicate that under the edit menu. I have a duplicate command here or keyboard shortcut command D. So I now have two of the identical shape with the same gradient fill. So I'm gonna change my fill option in the graphic inspector from gradient fill to advanced gradient fill. And you'll see at first we have the exact same gradient fill, but with a much different menu option to choose from. In the advanced gradient fill, I have a color swatch for the left side and a color swatch for the right side and a pivot point in between those two colors where I can select where the gradient begins to graduate from one color to the other. So if I want the weight of the gradient to be to the extreme right or to the extreme left, I just click on this slider, and as you can see, change the gradient from the extreme right or the extreme left. So let's zoom out and take a look at how that affects our shape. I'm gonna grab that slider and move it to the extreme left, and you see here I have the pivot point of the gradient changes as I slide the slider. So where our standard gradient fill fills consistently over distance from blue to lighter blue, our advanced gradient fill is customizable where that distance can be changed to be weighted more heavily to one side or the other. 
the advanced gradient fill bar that houses the two colors that make up my gradient are editable as well. So if I click on one of the two swatches, I'll give you a closer look so you can see a shadow appears around the swatch once it's selected. So by clicking on it, I can select or deselect it. Once it's selected, I can reach in here and pull out any other color that I want. Same with the color on the other end. Reach in my box, pull out any color. To add an additional color to my advanced gradient fill, I simply click on the gradient thumbnail in the advanced gradient fill inspector. Note the cursor changes from a standard mouse cursor to one with a plus. That's my indication that I'm ready to add a color. So if I click here, a color will be added. I can highlight that color and go and select any color I want from the colors inspector. All three of these colors and their weighted graduated pivot points can be moved around here in the advanced gradient fill inspector. So all three colors can be customized here. In fact, the pivot point between all colors can also be customized for different effects. Notice the closer I get the pivot point to any particular color, the harder the edge gets. So if we zoom in on this thumbnail, the pivot point between black and purple can be brought all the way to the color purple creating a hard edge. Let's zoom out and see what that looks like on the canvas. So that pivot point is brought further to the left to create a softer edge, further to the right to create a harder edge. We have three colors in our advanced gradient fill now. We can click the plus anywhere on the thumbnail to add a fourth, highlight that color, and choose it in the crayon box or any other color inspector. The pivots between each color can be customized individually for hard or soft transitions from one color to another. Any of those colors selected can also be transparent. So if we want to take the black and instead of having it be black in color, make it transparent, we make sure it's selected. Go down to the colors inspector. Careful not to use the opacity slider in the graphic inspector, but the opacity slider in the colors inspector and bring that down to zero. That now serves as a transparency within that advanced gradient fill. So if I were to drag that color over something that is not transparent, you would be able to see through that gradient fill with that transparency. And there's no limit to the number of colors you can drop into this advanced gradient fill. In fact, I'll drop in several more and change some of them. Let's add some green in here. and some blue. Now I'm going to make one of these colors black. And notice that it looks like the transparency in the middle of the advanced gradient fill just got larger. But keep in mind there's a difference between transparency and matching the background color. So if I drag this back to the white, notice that the transparency is truly that, transparent. The black was not transparent, but since it blended in with the background gave the appearance that it was. The angle of the advanced gradient fill can be changed using the angle knob in the advanced gradient fill inspector. And that can be changed arbitrarily as you rotate the knob. Or you can enter a coordinate for what particular angle you'd like that to be. Use your imagination and you can imagine what kind of effects you begin to get when you start playing with these advanced gradient fills with transparencies. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the EmpowerCast iWork series. Please be sure to subscribe so you're notified of the next episode in the series. And as always, your comments and ratings are appreciated. Thanks for tuning in. This is Pete.